right. Welcome back to the Flipping Junkie podcast. Today, I've got Gary Ochoa. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Good, Danny. How are you? Ah, doing great. Um, just at the office by myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Very cool. Uh, whole team, team's not here. They're all working from home. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Today I wanted to, to get into what's going on with, with you and, and, you know, what, how, how things have, your business has been affected and what you're doing. And you had a great message that we, I wanted to talk about with, you know, not, not giving up and not, you know, feeling like things have changed and getting down on yourself and not, you know, continuing to push on, um, you know, to keep the business going and to, to have faith that everything's going to work out just great. And um, let's start though first with, you know, how you got into this business, like what got you fired up about this business and what was that start like? Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so back in uh, like 2013, um, uh, I was working. Uh, I was working for um, work for Rolls Royce, and uh, uh, I was managing, or not. I was I was a field service rep uh, at Cannon Air Force Base in New Mexico, and uh, uh, working on uh, C one thirties and and whatnot uh, for them, and. Um, uh, I was trying to think of a business I could do because uh, I had a lot of free time on my hands. I'd get up early, go to work, and then, you know, get off super early and be at home. And uh, so I figured I could use that time making money. And so I tried to put something together, you know, something maybe a, a, just my wife and I could do together that would, you know, anything. And uh, so one of my colleagues who uh, worked for Piper Pup, he came out and he started talking to me about real estate. Um, doing, uh, uh, we started talking about, uh, lease option deals. Um, uh, you know, the big, the 2008 crash, you know, people lost their homes. So there were tons of people out there with money that, um, could rent or could lease, but they didn't have the credit to, to get into, into houses. And so, um, to get a mortgage. So we started about doing that. And, uh, so in 2014, um, you know, after reading a bunch of stuff, um, in fact, in fact, he, he was like, uh, yeah, you need to, you need to read some stuff, you know, learn. He's like, you know, there's Jason Hartman, there's, you know, this guy. And he's like, oh, I followed this guy. It's, uh, have you ever heard of the flip junkie podcast? And I said, no, I've, I don't know anything about that, you know? And so he's like, yeah, follow this guy, Danny Johnson. You know, he, he, he knows a bunch of stuff about flipping. And so I started listening. And, and so I was listening for a while. And then, um, I don't know, I think it was in September of two, 2014, you did a, a podcast with Justin Williams. At the end of the podcast, he, you know, had this offer, you know, join my fail fast flipping forward yeah, that's what it was called. Yeah. deal. And, yeah. And uh, so I was like, well, shoot, why don't I do something like that? So I, I joined that group and got in and started listening and joined the Facebook group. And that's really where my education came from. Uh, and, and so I was doing this on the side while I was working, uh, while I was working for Rolls Royce. Uh, I went to Sierra Nevada, um, learned how to work on PC 12s and then uh, uh, went to Lockheed Martin and still trying to do the same. But I was, you know, I had a government job, or sort of not a government job, but I was a, it's a private industry working for uh, the military. And then I uh, had some jobs overseas. And so I was trying to figure out how to do this from overseas, flip houses. And I'd kind of recruited some people um, to help me back in the States, you know, people on the ground. And so we kind of did that a little bit. And then, um, uh, big thing that happened was my son got sick. And, uh, so I had to, we had to call it quits, uh, from, you know, deploying, uh, cause I was home so maybe two weeks, two or three weeks out of, you know, every 90 days. And then, uh, so, so it made it really tough. And, uh, so, we, um, so I, I resigned from that job and when, uh, when I resigned from that job, I was like, well, I'm just going to do this flipping thing full time. And so it took me a couple of months to get up and running. Um, you know, that was uh, October 2017. 
Hmm. And I went out to Flip Hacking Live at, at that time and met up with, I think I met you there. Um, I think I met, I met Bill Allen and, you know, talked to a bunch of guys, you know, um, and listened to a bunch of the round tables. And then in 2018 is really when I was able to, uh, beginning 2018 was when I was really able to focus on doing this full time. And we've been doing it ever since. It's been, nice. it's been really interesting. Nice. So what was that like? I want to hear about that transition into full time and, and the steps you took, because you were obviously surrounding yourself with, you know, a lot of people in the industry that were building systems and building up teams. How did you transition into full time? Were you, uh, did you, did you build a team at that time or did you just use the information you were getting and more focused on, you know, wearing all the hats yourself and building the business that way? Yeah, I was, uh, I was doing it all myself. Um, in fact, I, I, I'm really kind of still doing it myself. I don't, I don't have a team um, that I've built out, which makes it hard. Um, I just, uh, uh, I think, you know, um, that's some. I definitely know that that's what I need to do this year, and and I'm working towards that. Um, we're just, we're just not there yet. But during that time, yeah, that transition was really, it was really. Um, I was a little fearful because of, you know, uh, because I hadn't done it before, you know, um, I had owned businesses as far as, you know, uh, I owned a painting company. Uh, we did painting and remodeling. Uh, I owned a, a business where I, I installed satellite dishes, uh, when I was at college. Um, so, so that part of it, you know, being miles wasn't an issue. It was, it was how, <laughs> how are we going to make this thing work? And, you know, where do I get the buyers? Where do I, you know, where do the, you know, you know, how do I, how do I, I didn't have a problem talking to people, but it was like, okay, are these people really going to say yes? Are they really going to sign on the dotted line? And yeah. are they really going to, you know, are they really going to want to do this? And I had a little bit of success before, um, you know, before I went full time, you know, we had a, we had a property while I was overseas. Um, I put an ad out on uh, Facebook or Craigslist or something. And this lady replied and she had this house that was, you know, up three hours away from us and, um, and she wanted to make some money. And so, uh, so I put a tenant in it, basically it was option deal. And, uh, and, and they, um, they ended up, the tenant didn't end up buying. They ended up moving out and, and leaving the pre and, um, but, you know, for what a year and a half or whatever, they, they were in the property and we made a little bit of money and, um, that was kind of exciting. I was like, okay, well, yeah, maybe, maybe something like this will work. Um, and then we did, uh, let's see, after that was, uh, we did a house, we, uh, we had a rental property in California that, uh, we ended up fixing up and selling and just, you know, made it, you know, one that easy. And then, uh, you know, from there, it just kind of, it kind of snowballed, um, you know, the deal really consistent, you know, real consistent up front, but, you know, over time, as I continued to press in and just, just do the things that, that I, I knew to do, like we got more and more and the next yeah. one that came, the next one came. Yeah. So it was exciting. Yeah. 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 So, so what it sounds like to me is, you know, that point of, of having that that lease option deal that you did with the property that was three hours away from you, you know, gave you that that trust that hey, you know, maybe this maybe will people will sign on the dotted line, people will I will be able to get these deals, and we can you know make money on them and, and this will work out. And uh, you know, it's so it's so crazy how much mindset does play into a lot of this, you know, because there's even been times and I've spoken about this before where you know I had a dry spell in deals. And I'm like, what's going on? It's been two months. Nobody's accepting my offers. Um, it's just a dry spell. It's like, I, I, you know, I'm worried I'm not going to be able to get a deal. And it gets to become the psychological thing. And I don't know if we realize it, but I think we act a little bit differently, you know, towards the process because we have this doubt all of a sudden. And it's like changing the mindset of thinking, you know, I'm going to stop thinking that it's hard to get a deal. And I'm just going to say, no, it's not. It's just I, I added that whole you know, side of it to my mentality and I need to drop it and you just let go of it and just keep plugging away and the deal will come. And then almost immediately after making that decision, you know, a deal would, would land. And it's just, uh, 
it's kind of amazing. And some people might not be, believe that that's a true kind of thing that happens, but I'm telling you, it's happened multiple times for me. I, I get into this weird state and then it, something just has to give. I got to change that mindset and then things all start working out. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. It's like, um, uh, you know, I mean, it's just like anything else, you know, you, you, you know, once you stop, once you stop doing the things, once you stop being consistent, you stop doing things that you know you're supposed to do. Um, you know, it, it's like, it's like, you're not, you're not successful. And then, you know, once you get over that lock in your mind and you like, no, wait a second, let me, let me just keep doing this, right? Let me go back to what I was doing and then it starts flowing again. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's weird. Some you get those, those mental blocks that come in and they just, they just linger, you know, and you, so, uh, there have been a couple of times I didn't even know they were there. And I'm like, what am I doing? You know? And, and <laughs> so I had to stop and like, okay, wait a second. All right. What did I do before? Right. And then, so then you go back, I go back to my list, you know, okay, let me just follow the list. And then I go down and okay, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. And it's, and it goes down, you know, you're just checking people, you're making offers and, you know, uh, people that don't call you back, you're just doing the follow up. That's, 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 that's where it all is. I think probably, I think probably, um, I'd say, I'd say about 25% to 30% of my deals are all from just, just following up somebody who said no before and you just, you know, you just reach out to them again and like, Hey, have you thought about this anymore? And they're like, well, yeah, maybe, you know, I'm like, well, let me show you what we can do, you know? And you present them with a couple of different ideas and then they go, Oh yeah, well, maybe that can work. You know, this has been sitting for, you know, 120 days, 300 days and nobody's, nobody's bought it. Well, what if I just, what if I leased it out? What if I did a lease option purchase, you know? And then, then, then they're right back in, then they're into making money and they've got a contract and they've got a tenant and, you know, they've got a little bit of income and, you know, they're not paying that, that mortgage every month. Nice. Nice. What, um, what other follow-up were you, I think you had mentioned before the show, you had talked about some of the follow-up you were doing, you know, also with, you know, people you have had, uh, had bought from before, right. Or sold to, or you're doing several different types of follow-up. I thought you had said. Oh yeah. So we're doing, um, so, uh, so we're doing follow up with both our, um, with both our leads, um, all of our leads that we either had made offers before, or, um, we hadn't, hadn't heard from, we're starting to follow up with those people sending postcards. Um, if we skip trace them, uh, send them a text, uh, give them a phone call, uh, if, if, if the phone numbers work, um, and then we're also, but we're also following up with our buyers, right? We're going through our buyers list, finding out who's still buying during this time, who's still, you know, involved in doing real estate. And, and some of the people I've called and they've said, no, we're, we're backing off right now. We're not going to do anything until we find out, uh, you know, which direction, you know, the state's going to go. And, you know, we, we just, it, the time, it's just uncertain right now. Mm -hmm. So, but then other people have said, yeah, we're, we're still buying, we're still selling, send me anything you got. And, uh, you know, we'll look it over. So, so that's what, that's what we're still in. But the, the, the slowdown for us has been on the, on the buy side. Um, just no people that we've gotten a couple of, we've talked to a couple of people that are upset that we're calling them, you know, during the COVID 19 thing um and got a little upset but you know we're still we're still reaching out to people and and others um you know we started a ppc campaign uh two months ago and um uh and we we're getting leads in from that and we're following up with people and reaching out to them uh pretty uh consistently and and we're just just waiting to hear back from uh from people we've reached out to so a lot of doing a lot of follow-up. Nice, nice. Um, I wanted to also go back and, and when you, when we talked about your going full-time in the business, um, you know, and then your statement of, of, you know, I know I need to build the team and, and do all that stuff. Um, like what, what are your, do you have like sort of an idea of the, the, the path you want to take to get to that place? 
you know, it's like, what, what does it look like for you in, in two years if you do build a team? Like, what is your idea of that? Um, I think that i um, like to, to, you know, to, to build that team out this year. Um, I, th I think I'd like to start with uh, actually just, you know, a VA. And I've talked to a couple of people um, uh, in other parts of the country, um, hiring a VA uh, to come on and, and make phone calls, um, uh, hiring something, somebody locally, I think would be good that could, uh, you know, could go out and do the thing, do other tasks that, um, that I'm, you know, or, uh, that, that need just stuff that needs to get done, right? Make phone calls, answering phone calls, setting appointments, um, typical VA stuff. Uh, in two years, it'd be great if, if I had a, you know, at least, you know, two, uh, three or four people that were, you know, in sales, VA, you know, dispositions. Um, and I think that, you know, if our, if this PPC, you know, campaign continues to grow, I mean, I think we'll be able to do that. And, uh, and then we'll just hire a phone person who can make those calls and set phone calls and, um, uh, you know, get pictures from people and they'll probably go that route. Um, but it'd be great. It'd be great to do that. So over the next two years, it'd be great if, if, you know, uh, <laughs> we were bringing in more money and we could invest in, in flipping more and, and, uh, getting more properties. So what are you guys focusing mainly on right now? Are you focusing on, on wholesaling and, and doing some lease options or? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're focusing primarily on wholesaling and lease options. So. Um, I've got a, I've got a couple of properties right now. They're both, um, they're both lease options. And, uh, one of them is a wholesale, uh, is a wholesale property, but you know, uh, lots of calls, not a lot of bites. So, <laughs> yeah. So what, whenever you went full time, what was that, that trudge like of getting things going, knowing that you had to, to start getting consistent deals? Like what were you doing? What was your initial like plan of action to get the calls coming in to get those leads? Uh, the, the initial plan of action was uh, when we first transitioned over, we went out to, so um, uh, a buddy of mine, so while I was working overseas, I had recruited a buddy of mine uh, in Bill, North Carolina to uh, be the boots on the ground, look for properties and send them to me. And then I'd evaluate them and, you know, make, all the phone calls from overseas, you know, late night working and there's a time difference. But um, so in 2017, when I made that transition over, I called him up and we got on a plane. We flew out to San Diego, uh, met you guys and, and uh, really started to try and put a plan together to, to move forward full time. And we did all those basic things. Um, you know, we went out and we found, uh, went out and found local buyers, um, we were building building that buyers list. We were finding the properties, um, posting ads on Craigslist, Facebook. Um, we did. Uh, we started a, a mail campaign. Um, it was very small, <laughs> so very very small. You know, limited budget, and uh, um, and you know, we started making phone calls to started calling on on properties on the on the MLS and and making offers on properties on the MLS and, and, uh, you know, interesting story. We kind of ran into a bit of a snag because, you know, this, as a wholesaler, you're consistently finding buyers and finding properties. Well, you know, um, I didn't have any real, I didn't have any consistent buyers. Right. So mm -hmm. I, but I'd go and I'd find a property, I'd put it under contract off the MLS and then didn't have the buyer to follow through. Right. So, or, uh, so, so we, we got to a point where it was like, well, I got to make an earnest money deposit and, you know, we've got to, we, you know, in order to put this thing under contract, we, we've got to have a buyer and there's a couple of those that we did and <laughs> it didn't work out. So, um, so total learning experience, you know, yeah. and, um, so, uh, so then we shifted to primarily just buying buyers, right. And, and marketing. Um, and so, um, just 
trying to trying to do all of those money making tasks um, early in the in the morning was um, was a was a challenge as you know I think uh, even all the reading I've done um, I got your book um, and and read that uh, online and uh, was uh, I was trying to follow along the same to do the same things and trying to do all those money things or I'm sorry, all those money making tasks. It was kind of hard, um, you know, and, and trying to keep it straight in my head, but we figured it out and uh, we made some things happen and, and uh, we just moved forward with that. Yeah. So that, that's a big thing because it's, there, there is quite a bit of effort to find out what's going to produce you know, and then getting, and that's the, the interesting thing about the business, right, is it takes a while to get those deals because, you know, there's so much potential in them. There is competition and you've got to really turn over every rock to find these deals. But when you get one that pays out really well, you know, you have the money to do more and more and, and it, it's really getting over that first and second deal kind of trudge that, that really is the bulk of the issue for, for newer people, I think. But, but what I like that you did was you said you did a bunch of different things, right? Like you, you didn't just say, I'm going to do this one thing and then, you know, hope it works. And if it doesn't, then I'm out, you know, you, you were just doing whatever you could to find out what was going to really start producing for you guys. And I think, you know, people tend to find, you know, the, the, the one, two, three different things that are kind of working for them you know, and then they continue to do those. Um, and it might not be what everybody else is talking about, right? It's just a matter of kind of getting in there. And I always thought it was fun to sit there and like look through the guerrilla marketing book. I think that was what Jay Levinson or somebody's name. I think, oh, yeah. somebody, that, I think that was the author. Guerrilla marketing. It just kind of like a lot of them are crazy ideas. You know, you do like, like uh, publicity stunts and crap like that. I mean, if you're crazy enough, maybe you do that stuff. But it just kind of thinking through the different you know, options or, or things that you have. Cause at the, at the end of the day, all you're trying to do is get in front of somebody that might be facing a situation where they've got a property that they'd like to get a quick sale on. That's it. Right. So it's like, who are yeah. they? What are they experiencing and how can I get in front of them? Right. You know, and yeah. there's a ton of different things you can think of to do that stuff. And, you know, I don't hear many people talking about some of the gorilla stuff because it is a lot of work, but in the beginning, a lot of times you got more more time than you have money to 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 do those kinds of crazy things and uh yeah i don't know like i like that yeah you yeah push through and did it yeah absolutely one of the things we yeah one of the things we did was we um uh, uh i say we one of the things i did was uh i went uh, i went um not door to door specifically but you know i got out and i uh you know i got out and hit the pavement and you know, went and knocked on some doors. And of course it was, you know, they were, it was a, a calculated risk. You know, you went on and pulled the list from the source and, you know, you mailed the list, but you know, when you, if you responded or if you didn't hear back from a lot of people, then you, I went and knocked on their door. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was really interesting because one, one property um, that I went and knocked on the door um, to was a guy the house belonged to his parents. He inherited it and he was, um, he was a little bit older, but he was, he was building a company out of Lubbock, Texas, um, to go and fly drones that would, um, do maintenance, uh, uh on these windmills, the, uh, you know, these, mm. uh, uh uh, these, these wind turbines, these giant wind turbines. And, uh, they had a, fire apparatus and and everything in case you know they caught fire they put it out and so i met a, i met some interesting people but I, I remember that guy he's yeah he's like yeah, yeah man he's like you know you fly yeah come, come for me and i'm like well i'm doing this thing but that's cool you know <laughs> showed me took me in his house showed me this whole room of all these different designs of drones that they were working on and like it was really it was really neat so yeah uh, but, but yeah Got out and knocked that's on some part doors. of the business. You just, and that also brings me to, do you enjoy the seller meetings? I do. Um, so, so funny is I, I'm a, 
uh, I'm a pretty personable person. I, I'm very social. I can talk to pretty much anybody. Um, in fact, my wife is always saying like, you know, we can go and stand in line for, you know, 10 minutes and I walk away with three friends. And uh, so, so I don't have, I don't have talking to people. Um, but you know, every now and again, that, that fear of the unknown or that fear of, of getting in the other person kind of comes up and, and, uh, you know, uh, causes me to, you know, be hesitant. Um, but I find that, you know, if I just press on through and continue doing what I'm doing, that, um, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem talking to people and, and getting in front of them. And, and, uh, and in most cases I, I found a lot of people really agree with what I'm doing and they're like, yeah, I'll do that. You know, and I just try to explain to them, you know, all the details about how we, how we make a deal, how we make a sale and how it's going to benefit them. Um, and, and, and we press on that. You know? Um, but I don't find I have to do that too often. Most people are really receptive. Yeah. It's amazing. Cause the, the idea, you know, cause you know, I think I, I've heard from, from new people sometimes, you know, talking about, you know, this ambulance chaser sort of label, you know, and it's, it's like, it's not really true. I mean, what it is, is like offering our service. And if somebody finds that that's, you know, something that makes sense for them, you know, then, then it's, they're just like, they absolutely love you for doing what you do, you know, because it just saved them a ton of time because they, they don't know what it's like to be in that position that that person was in, because I've been there before myself with the property that I just didn't want. Like this thing was just a pain in my butt. And I just, you know, this is draining me, the energy, all that kind of stuff. You know, I want to stop the bleeding. I could have got way more for it, but I was just done. Like I, and so I was a motivated seller. And so like, you know, I can understand where people, and there's so many people that, that face that. So if you go into it thinking what you're doing is ambulance chasing, then you need to go find something else to do because you've right. got the wrong idea of what it even is. Yeah. And that's gonna, that smell is going to be there for every time you have an interaction with somebody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And there's like, and it's, it's really interesting to see how people are like, well, how do you, how they question you, right? Okay, so you're not a real estate agent, so how do you sell my house, right? And I'm like, well, you know, uh, we come to an agreement, and you know, and then I'll I have a list of buyers, and I put it out to my team, and they go out and they 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 decide whether they want to purchase it or not. And you know, sometimes sometimes it takes a, a few a few weeks. Sometimes it's really quick, you know. And and they're like, okay, well. You know, so if you just sit down and talk with them and explain to them what you're doing and how you do that, mm-hmm. um, so you don't give away every secret you have, but you know, you want to, you want to just, just inform them and, and they, they seem to, uh, customers seem to get on board right away. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is also that, that whole, I, but it's probably less and less as people are more and more, because when I first got into this, the whole idea of somebody buying a house was still kind of new to a lot of sellers. You know, yeah. but I think with the TV shows and everything that most people understand what people are doing now, you know, with, with yeah. doing that. So the whole idea that it's a scam is not really probably as, as uh, common. And I've mentioned this story before, but I remember one time that, you know, I, I was noticing traffic coming to my website. There's a ton of traffic coming from this bass guitar forums. And I was like, why are so many people coming what? to this bass guitar forum to my website? So, you know, the, for buying house. Uh-huh. And so I, uh, I went to the forums and I was like looking, searched for my website, found the post. And I guess one of these bass guitar players got a letter from me about buying his house. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, there was all kinds of speculation, you know, all this stuff of like, you know, what is this? Is this a scam? What is this? What's going on here? And like in, in people doing their own Google searches and stuff for me and like saying, oh, he's an attorney and all this kind of stuff. And it's like all this random weird crap. And it's like, my phone number is right there on that postcard. Why don't you just call me, you know, and, and ask me instead, they've got all the speculation of, you know, the scam and how they're doing it and how I'm an attorney and I'm not an attorney, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And after, you know, probably two or three pages of all this, you know, one of the ga- bass guitar players got on there and said, well, I'm an investor. And he's just, you know, throwing that out there to see if you're interested in selling your house. There's nothing more to it. 
We do it all the time. Yeah. It was just interesting. But it's funny, funny how people can get real weird about somebody wants to pay cash for my house. What is this? And uh, yeah. kind of understanding that like we know what we're doing, but other people, when they receive that message, you have no idea what goes through their mind. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I am. Um, uh, so, uh, so I work with um, several real estate agents in town here and um, you know, I've had several uh, real estate agents, it's go to the, um, what is it, the uh, uh, Real Estate Association. I guess they have a meeting every month and they do trainings and all that stuff. And uh, I, I, uh, I've had a couple of them come back and say, oh, yeah, this guy's, this guy's really upset. I mean, he mentioned you by name and da-da-da-da and how you're selling houses and you're not a real estate agent and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And I, at first, the first time I heard that, like, I was like, uh oh, you know, like, what can I expect here? You know, like, so I went, I went to the group and I was like, hey, you know, what are you guys seeing with this? What can I expect? Is anything going to happen? Nothing, nothing. And, you know, they were like, why are they going to the, why are they pointing you to the real estate board? I mean, that's for real estate agents. It doesn't involve you. And <laughs> they can't do anything. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like but it was a bit affecting their business. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, somebody yeah. might list with them and instead they're selling to an investor and, you know, it's just competition. Um, yeah. You know, because, yeah, we, we kind of tend to, to win a lot more deals, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it is, for sure. That's the, the competition part of it. So I noticed I like your shirt. You know, if you're watching the YouTube part of this, you can see it. Yeah. Right it's Flip Pilot shirt on there since the beginning. And I appreciate you being a part of that Flip Pilot and really helping us out in the Facebook group with, you know, the, the stuff that you're looking to, to have us add into the system and all that kind of stuff. Um, do you mind just speaking part? about what you kind of use it for? Like, how are you, how are you using it? Yeah, actually, um, I, I really, I really, um, this, uh, you know, the flip pilot, uh, program has really helped me to, um, stay on top of all my properties. I had, um, I was using a, an Excel spreadsheet before and I would, I would take, you know, I would contact all, put all my contacts at the, you know, all my leads at the top and then I would take, um, uh, I would take that lead and, and if they had contacted me and the deal failed, I would put it down to the bottom and change it like a color, a gray color. And so I had this whole method of moving those properties around, but I didn't have, I didn't have a way even though I had a, a, a spreadsheet, I didn't have a way of determining where I was in the process with mm -hmm. that. And, uh, and really it was just trying to keep everything straight, you know, in different Excel files um, that I was using, but I was able to, uh, so, so I, I knew that, you know, the whole flip pilot program was coming out and, you know, uh, uh, for years we waited, right. For years I waited and, <laughs> and I was so excited and, uh, and then, um, you know, you put out the first flip pilot, the first version, and then, uh, and then it kind of went, I guess it kind of went south or something and, uh, or it wasn't, I don't know if it wasn't popular. Uh, yeah, and no, then it was the, the usability of it. Yeah, it was not, was not what we wanted. And then, you know, we had built in pretty much everything for everybody and it wasn't. Uh oh, did I lose you? Yeah. The, the, yeah. So anyway, we shut that down to, to be able to create the second one, the 2.0 that you're using. You still there? Oh, are you there? Yep. I'm here. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, yeah, so so then you came out with the second version. Second version was awesome. Um, I got in on that and it's been really it's been really amazing to uh, you know, import all my leads, uh, uh, go through all my leads and put uh, put a status on them. And then um, be able to transition them over into, you know, whether we're negotiating, contacting, analyzing, uh, you know, whether we're rehabbing. Uh, and so that was that was really awesome. And I use that um, I use that with another program, and I can buy houses where I can look at information and buy houses all over the country. So, and I think those two those two programs combined together are unstoppable, just amazing. So, so what what does the other one do and how do you how do you use oh, both of them together? Two. 
what is the uh, what does the other system do, and how do you use the two together? Yeah, so I use uh, so I'm using uh, PropStream, PropStream okay. and FlipPilot, and uh, so I'm able to look at uh, property records across the country, and that's how we're making offers, and that's how we're you know getting pictures and contacting um, people in in other states. So right now we're um, obviously we're buying nationwide, but you know, we've looked at, uh, looked at properties and we're mailing people in California, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, uh, Ohio, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida. So, I mean, it's, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, I think the two tools combined together really are, are phenomenal. Nice. So, so what do you do in, so are you getting the leads through, through um, Google ads or, or something, and then going into prop stream to, to get the details. Yeah. So, um, so we, yeah, so we started with, uh, we started this PPC campaign probably two months ago. And um, so we're getting leads through that. Um, but we're also following with um, other leads. We pulled lists from like list source and then we'll go through and look up those properties. We'll go, go down that list and, you know, we'll send them a postcard, but in the meantime, you know, we're looking up their property and, you know, seeing if it's something that we want to pursue or if it's, if it's not looking it up on Zillow. And of course, you know, some of those sites are, are still, you know, um, really good to use Zillow, Realtor, um, you know, truly, uh, all that stuff. But, but primarily we use, um, just, I use the flip pilot and the pro, uh, prop stream, um, uh, together and that's where that's where we derive information from. All right. And so you're just like flip pilots helping you manage where it is in the whole process, right? Whether you're reaching out to them, you know, and where it is, whether you you have an appointment when you're putting it under contract. Are you making use of the the automated follow up within Flip Pilot? I um, I am do I am using uh, I am using it for for follow up, um, but it doesn't integrate with Vumber, which I have my um, my stuff. Uh, you know, I already have all my phone numbers and text messages, and I get a you know for a really cheap price, I get a ton of text messages. Um, but uh, uh, there is a, a Zapier that we've we've used to connect uh, Vumber with Flippilot. Um, haven't issued a call really yet. So, um, so that's something that we're looking into doing. Um, and we just haven't done it yet though. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to look at what the, the capabilities where we might be able to do something with Vumber. Cause yeah, we just have the call rail right now just because it's been so, so good with all the, the different kind of call flows and stuff that call rail has in it. You know, I just like, I haven't seen anything better than, than that out there. And just the, the way that they've got their app and all that kind of stuff too. So, you know, that's why we, we stuck with that one first, but I mean, we can certainly look and see how we might be able to accommodate those systems as we grow this out. Yeah. yeah and it might be just something where I've just got to make the change. Um, so, I mean, uh, we, we have the guy that uh, we have a good guy that uh, is working or working with set up for us. And uh, as far as the Zapier uh, and then worked with uh, your team, uh, to build that out hmm. that's good but but we probably do really just need to switch over um so we can get that automated part of it um uh flowing uh, which would really be good because i do a lot of follow-up and it's all you know manual texts and you know emails and phone calls instead of you know just having the system do it for myself that'd yeah. probably be well, that that probably way it's all the communications i'll track yeah. through the system on the record you know for you so but uh yeah. Awesome. I appreciate you being on the show, Gary, and uh, you know that you've continued to to push through even with all this uncertainty in the market. And uh, you know what? Real quick, as we end, I guess is there any is there anything as we end this uh, conversation that you'd like to share about? You know how you're adjusting, whether you're needing to adjust, and how you're adjusting to the current situation. Um, I think, uh, we, we've still continued to buy and we still advertise that we're still continuing to buy. Um, um, the, uh, one of my customers has said that they, but because 
they have an immunocompromised child, they're not the people walk through the house. Hmm. So um, we've we've walked the grounds. Um, what they did is they, they uh, and so we can kind of walk around and get an idea. Um, but I have pictures online um, of that property, and we've got a lot of interest in it. Um, uh, we're just we're he's getting ready to make a job change, and so his wife and kids are there right now. They'll be they'll be moving here shortly, um, and then once that happens, then you know we can bring as many people through as possible. But um, but so we've had to make we've had to make those adjustments within. Um, and, and, you know, maybe we can't see the house, but other, other people, you know, we've walked them through our other properties and, uh, and not had an issue. Um, as far as meeting with people, I think, uh, we've done it all online. We've done, uh, you know, we've used DocuSign and sent documents over. And if we've needed something later, we needed a notary or something like that, then we've, you know, we've met up with them and we've gotten a notary or we've sent a notary out to, get that taken care of. But uh, for the most part for us, I mean, it's been business as usual. So not, you know, with just a, a few minor, a uh, few minor adjustments. Oh, nice. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I mean, that seems to be the case for, for a lot of, of people. So it's, it's hopefully that'll continue on as, as this progresses and uh, hopefully we'll all make it through and, you know, hopefully the more importantly, the real estate market will <laughs> will make it through. The economy will make it through. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I guess yeah, if, anybody, I if anybody out there is looking to get in touch with you for anything, is there any way that uh, you would have them to reach out to you? Yeah. So if you want to get me, you can get me uh, at sand and sun investments, uh, dot com, or you can give me a call. You can, uh, uh, we're at 575 449 8206, and we're located in Clovis, New Mexico. And but like I said, we're by nationwide, so so give cool. us a call. Yeah, yeah, if you guys have a deal there in uh, Clovis, New Mexico, or somewhere else, and, and want to talk with Gary and see what he, he can do for you, definitely reach out to him. All right, Gary, appreciate it. Appreciate it, Danny. Yeah, have a good one. We'll talk soon. All right, you too. Take care. Bye bye.